lift up your voice to God and cry for an encounter. Ask the Lord. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. The Bible says, While we look not on the things which are seen, but on the things which are not seen, because the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are unseen are eternal. Now look at me. I want somebody to be very honest right now. Hi, I wish. Okay, let's let's try, brother. What is your biggest challenge currently in life? Your area of expectation. Are you are you comfortable to answer that question? All right. <laughs> All right. Do, does anybody want to help us? Something that trusting God for. It is. It, is, it's a, it has been done already as you have raised up your hand. Financial freedom. Can we celebrate our brother? <clears throat> now you can sit down and watch that the level of demand, the level of need, the level of responsibility on your life, you don't have the right capacity, the right access to resources to meet this demand. So, what you are looking for is financial freedom. Amen? Amen? What you are contending for is resources. Meanwhile, everything that defines your current challenge, there are things that are seen. So, when you look at your bank account and it's showing you zero error, it's something that is seen. The Bible says we don't look at the things which are seen because those things are temporal. He says our gaze is not on the things which are seen. Our gaze is on the things which are unseen. How do you see something that is unseen? Through faith, we understand. It is the eyes of your understanding that can see the things that are unseen. I want to explain something. Look at me. So anybody who walks by sight, he will be limited to only be a victim part time to anything that is his physical reality. But we are not supposed to be limited by the things which we see. Because the just shall live by faith. And the Bible says we walk by faith, not by sight. So physically, you can sit down and it looks like time is going. As a lady, time is going. No man is asking you out. By physical metrics, people can come and whisper in your ear, and say, but you know that the way this thing is, just accept anybody that shows up now. Because you know that time is not on your side. Your biological clock is ticking. How many people have heard things like that before? Meanwhile, it is ladies that are put under this pressure the most. Some ladies are laughing. <laughs> the challenge is that if you look at the things which are seen, your life will be defined by fear, doubt, uncertainty, depression, and gloominess. Because the cosmos is known to perpetually continue to administer levels of depression, levels of disappointment to everybody who attempts to walk on the path of spiritual progress. In fact, I don't think, I don't think we need to hide these things from ourselves. The moment you say, Lord Jesus, come into my life, you signed up for some measure of disadvantage in the world. There are things sinners will enjoy. You, it will be hard for you. It is because of Jesus in your life. This is why this one. So, the only way is that you will subscribe to the way of your own kingdom. Your kingdom does not operate by sight. 
you operate by faith. We don't look at things which are seen. We are looking at the things that are unseen. Because it is what you are seeing that inspires your conversation. Your confession is a product of what you are seeing. This is why wild men will be saying there is a casting down. We are saying there is a lifting. We are not hyping ourselves. We are not psyching ourselves. It's based on our sight capacity. It's what we saw that made us say like that. Now you have come out of the lab and the reports have you know, been presented to you and you opened the medical report and they showed you that there is an infirmity lodged in your bloodstream. That thing you are holding is what is seen. Everything seen is temporal. Did you hear me? Come on. Did you hear me? Everything seen is temporal. It says, while we look not on the things which are seen, but on the things which are not seen. Now, what is it that is not seen? Through faith, we understand that the words were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen are not made of the things which do appear. So, see, the clearest way to render that scripture, it says, through faith, we understand that everything physical was made from things that are not physical, the word. Then it opened it further. He says, the things which are seen are not made of things which do appear. So he says, the building block of every reality is unseen professions and declarations called words. Now you have two believers. One is holding that medical report. And he's saying, hi, is this how I will die? Lord, remember my children. Have mercy upon me. Take away this infirmity. No. That's one way of life. There's another person who operates in the economy of faith. Faith does not embrace that reality. Faith holds that medical report. And says, my body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. You know what you are, you, are, you are living by? You are living by the things which are not seen. This one is seen, but you believe stronger the things which are not seen. Because those things that are seen, they are temporal. You wake up in the morning and then you are feeling dizzy. Everywhere is just looking a bit dull to you. And they say this is one of the symptoms. One of the symptoms. The diseases of the Egyptian shall not come near my dwelling. The moment you begin to contend with these things, you either live by faith or you will live by sight. Many believers, unfortunately, they live by sight. And there is a very, a very thin line between faith and sight. There is people who live, rather there are people that live by, by, by sight and they have an outward appearance like they are people of faith. Brother, the state of your account is temporal. Sickness is temporal. Do you understand what I'm sharing with you? What is more solid, what is more authentic is the base every reality was created from. I go back again. Through faith, Hebrews 11 verse 3. Through faith, we understand that the words were made by the word of God. In fact, in John chapter 1, he says, all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. He says in verse 1, he says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. So everything made is by the word. If anything goes out of plan, you use the word to correct it. I'm not talking about somebody trying to just speak bold, bold language and say, I cannot die. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, carry the word of God. You too become a co-creator like God. You put that word on your lip and declare it. You will decree a thing 
and it shall be established. So, although your body is suggesting contrary, your utterance is, I shall not die, but live to declare the works of the Lord. The diseases of the Egyptian shall not come near my dwelling. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. You know what you are doing? It's called the warfare of faith. You are carrying the word into situations to utter it until they come in compliance with the dictate of that word. The Bible says heaven and earth shall pass away. But this word, this is how you go to war with it. You know how many times Elijah prayed concerning rain? You know how many times he sent Elijah to go and check whether there's any sign? You, you woke up, you all say that my body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. Then you're not doing like this. And see the headache is still there. You now say, Kai, this thing is not even working. <laughs> Stay with it. It's called the warfare of faith. You quote the scripture, it didn't work. Quote it again. That first time you are quoting it is only in your head. It has not entered your heart yet. There's a way you hear even a lie for long, you start believing it. Is it truth that you hear that long that it will not become one with you? They are temporal. Brother, you are not broke. You are not broke. So, you don't go to a place of prayer and say, Lord, bless me. This is how faith works. Faith is the substance of what you are hoping for. So, you are not asking for it. They say it is a substance already. So, what is faith? What is the utterance of faith? Thank you, Lord, I prosper. Thank you, Lord, I am wealthy. Thank you, Lord, I lend to nations. You don't go and say, Lord, can you send somebody to, to give me something today? Thank you, Lord, because I'm a blessing. The person speaking has zero error in his account. Why we look not on the things which are seen. His eye have gone out from that reality. So there is a particular language of faith. If I hear what you are saying, I know whether you are prayed by faith or not. Somebody comes and say, you know, let's just be praying. God will show us mercy. Are you joking? It says, by his stripes, you were healed. This is the utterance of faith. Not you will be healed. Faith says you have been healed already. I am healed. Sickness is not in my body. This is faith. Not Lord, take away the sickness. That's not faith. That one you are praying, you are acknowledging that sickness is in your body. You are acknowledging that sickness is a, is a, is high. It's an occupant in your body. When you enter the utterance of faith, Faith only speaks the substance of what you are hoping for. So see what the prayer of faith looks like. It always starts with thanksgiving. Because you have a consciousness that you have received. Why does Jesus start his prayers with thanksgiving? He explored these things so much. A day came, he told the disciples, if you can have faith as small as a mustard seed. So he goes to the door of a tomb where a man has been kept for days, where he's rotting. He says, I thank you, Father. That's how his prayer started. I thank you, Father. They say, Lazarus is dead. Faith say he's sleeping. We don't embrace the same thing. We don't talk the same language. He says, let the weak, let them say they are strong. This is the utterance of faith. Because why you are weak, if you come to the place of prayer and you say, Lord, you can see that I am weak. Can you please give me strength? You don't know the language of faith. It says, let that weak man, let his lip profess that he is strong. It says, when men shall say there is a casting down, don't join them. A lot of people are talking about Nigeria and say Nigeria is scattered. This country is hopeless. This, this, is that. Why are you talking like that? That's not the utterance of faith. Faith is the substance of what you are hoping for. Nigeria is a blessed land. Nigeria is a prosperous country. This is, if I hear it, I know this man understands faith. The things of the spirit, they are captured in, in, in quadrants of knowledge. So, if we don't see you speaking it, we know that you are just psyching yourself. This is why we go to prayer, come out from prayer, after 10 years, nothing has been answered because there was no faith involved. While we look not on the things which are seen. If you must pray the prayer of faith, your eye must leave the things which are seen. You must only speak from the things which are not seen. What are those things that you are expecting? What do you want God to do? That is how you speak. Lord, I thank you for my marriage. 
I thank you because my children are blessed. The person that is praying has no child, has not married, but you are already thanking God for your children. That they are healthy, they are intelligent, they are respectful, and that your, the moment you start saying these things, the heavens know that you have found the channel of faith. Now you see why you enter into his presence with thanksgiving and into his courts with praises because that is the language of faith. You, if you know that you have received it, you begin to thank the person. Let me ask you a question, sir. If I leave a million dollars in your account and you know that I have left it for you, when you see me first, what are you going to tell me? Is it not thank you you start from? Would you start expect, uh, uh, explaining to me what you want to do with the money? The first thing is thank you. If you cannot start prayer from a place of gratitude, it's a sign that you don't know what you have touched in God. And nobody teaches you to say, first start thanking God. That thanksgiving is a normal reaction based on an understanding you have apprehended. I've laid hold on prosperity. So you enter the place of prayer. Thank you, Lord, because you have made all things Hi. Now this is the difference. Somebody is there praying for donkeys. Another person comes in one hour. He has done business with the immortals because he came in the language of faith. Come. This brother can say, Lord, give me admission. Huh? Hi. This one will get up in the morning and say, Lord, thank you because you have opened doors for me in various institutions. Thank you because it is up to me to choose where I want to go to. So he buys jam. This one also buys jam. This one is thanking Jesus. This one is asking God for admission. They are not the same thing. They are never the same thing. This person he is operating in the substance of what he is hoping for. This one is waiting until I see I will not believe. So, the thank you to God for this one only comes when his eye have seen it. This one, it is not, it is not based on until he sees it. It says, blessed are those who have not seen, yet they believe. Your landlord came and said, by <laughs> when I say landlord, many people's heart beat. See, <laughs> Jesus will have to show us mercy. <laughs> I saw some people, I, I saw them, their eye was like this since. As I mentioned, landlord, they... they, they, they <laughs> Is it that bad? <laughs> he said, I give you seven days to look for somewhere because I have sold the house. <laughs> now, have you been in a house? Have you been in a house before that the landlord now sold the house? Then a strange man that does not regard your, your legitimate claim to that house now show up and say, who are you? Leave this place. I give you seven days. The things that buffet us. When you leave that place, most of our prayer labors and our prayer bodies, they are sponsored by worries, by doubts, by fear. This is why we have little or no result from the place of prayer. Because worry is a burden. Fear is a burden. Faith also is a burden. Everybody goes to the place of prayer with a burden. One is going there with Lord, I thank you because you have never left me without a proof. I thank you because I have never slept on the street before. You know what he's doing? The landlord, the threat is real. The threat is affecting him. So he began to go back to God's faithfulness in the past. Counting his blessing one by one. Through that blessing, his boldness about what God can do becomes very strong. Another person forgets all what God has done in time past and is focusing on the challenge of the now. Somebody is lying down on one sick bed now and is thinking, will I die? Brother, how many sick bed have you laid down on and you got up? How many nights did you think you will not see the next day and God made you see it? Why did you forget all of the victories of the time past? This is how many of us live our life. Every season, we enter into fear, worry, 
anxiety again as though God has never proven to you before that he can come through for you. Faith is the substance of the things you are hoping for. It is the evidence of what you have not seen. Can you have an evidence of something you have not seen before? Evidence of what you have not seen. Those two things don't add up together. So it means I came and I saw this brother rejoicing. I saw him rejoicing. I said, come on, share the good news with me. What happened? And he says, he's just thanking God for the admission. Admission? You have no written jam. You are excited. Let me share what I'm trying to say with you. You don't finish prayer and then you now come and join people and say, Kai, the kind of hours we canceled in prayers, I know that from what we have done, I know God will answer. The utterance of faith is God has answered. He has answered. Faith says before you came to him, he already knows the things you are in need of. This is why if we start pressing this matter further, you will realize that everything you are worried about, they are temporal. They can change. Because faith is the bedrock of every reality. The moment you can believe it, your utterance will change. It is out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. So your mouth only confess the state of your heart. If your heart can see it, your mouth will utter it. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. The proof, the proof that you don't believe it is in your utterance. Now take one minute, wherever you are. I want you to now go back. You know, since I wanted to ask people questions and it looks like you want it to be a private matter. Think of that thing you want God to do for you and Change your style. Change your style of prayer now. Go through the route of faith. Huh. Can you pray, brother? Can you pray, sister? I thank you, Father. I thank you because you have exalted my horn. I thank you because you have anointed me with fresh oil. I thank you because you have made me a witness to my generation. Thank you, Father. Thank you because you have made my voice like the sound of a trumpet. Thank you because you have strengthened me on all sides. Thank you for my wife. Thank you for my husband. Thank you for my children. Thank you for admissions. Thank you for jobs. Brother, sister, as you are praying, I need you to, I need you to observe, observe this instruction. Why we look not on the things which are seen. Remove your eyes from that thing that is showing you discouragement. Focus on the things which are not seen. Because the things which are seen, they are temporal.
sickness, no sickness. It's temporal, it's temporal. Lack is temporal. you have your bible if it's in your phone or you have your bible in print hold it say this word come on say it very loud these words i believe say i believe them more than anything i see say my reality are in these words my reality are in these words I believe what he says that is my reality the word of God is more real the word of God is more real the things which are seen are temporal they are temporal they are temporal they are temporal listen you can be in the dungeon everything can be working contrary to your favor People have accused you and you have ended up in a very, very wrong situation. The Bible says, and Joseph remained in the dungeon until the word of God tried him. It was the word. It was the word. The things which does not appear, it was the word that delivered him. Do you believe the word of God above everything you are seeing? The report of the things which are seen, the report of the things which are seen is that there are no jobs in Nigeria. The report of the things which are not seen is that he shall be like a tree planted by the river of water and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. So two conflicting views. Who would you believe? Please tell yourself, I believe the word. Say, I believe the word. Say it again, I believe the word. Now as you are standing, there is a scripture the Holy Ghost is putting in your heart. It's a promise. I want you to pray it now. Claim it. Don't, don't ask God that God do it for me. No. Pray it into your life.
we are almost going, but it is important that we handle these truths and we handle them comprehensively. Point number two, which is something I will do in five minutes, God's willing. The mystery of sight. The mystery of sight. We don't see things as they are. We see things as we are. If you keep a thief in this hall right now, I mean somebody who is good at what he does as a thief. And the way Pastor Onu just kept his phone and that car key there, you know, that phone and there, the thief will start telling Pastor James that, um, please, let's be careful with the way we keep the... <laughs> the reason why he is talking like that is because that is the lens by which he sees the world. He believes everybody is like him. Amen? Amen. Let me give you another illustration. It will make sense to you. Now, if you happen to be a cheat in this place, an unfaithful spouse in a relationship, there will be a level of restlessness you will be tormented by, by default, on account of your nature of deception. So, you will be looking for something that is not there. Because you think that God is supposed to pay you for who, what you, you are. Everybody is looking at the world through the lens of who they are. So we see things not as they are, but as we are. If the devil defeats you, your eye will only see defeat in life. If the devil finds a way to corrupt your sense of self-worth, you will only see timidity, intimidation. You will only see defeat all through your life. The mystery of sight. So Satan will invest a chunk of time to affect your sight capacity so that it is who you are that is responsible for your perception. You only see things through the lens of who you are. Let me give you a third illustration before we read the scripture and pray. So if we off all the light in this hall now, all the light, would you be able to see? Answer now. But do you have eyes? Is there anything wrong with your eye? Your eyes are intact, but you cannot see because of light. Light has been taken away. Amen? Amen. So it takes the ability of a functioning eye plus light before you can see. Amen? Amen? I know you, you will not want to cooperate with me. See, now in the event that you don't have, you don't have light in a place, I, I want to show you something. Have you entered your room before when there is no light? Do you know why you could navigate your way? It's because in all the other periods when there was light, your brain had placed different items at different locations. So, you know that you have to take five steps and stop or else your head will hit a wall. Amen? You know what you are using now? You are using the eye of your understanding. It's still light. This time, this time, it is that which you have harnessed that you are using to journey through that darkness. It is still dark, but you are walking inside the darkness through light. This is how we operate inside this world. The world the earth, the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 60, verse 2, it says, Behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. So, a lot of people are groping their way through life. They are just touching wall like this. And anywhere by left face, anybody that knows the way, they will hold his clothes and be following him. It is through that light that we journey in darkness. We journey through darkness. In Psalm 119, I think verse 105, it says, Thy word 
is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Follow me. I want to share something. He says, that word that I've been telling you guys about, that it is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. See, you used to hear your friends will gather and say, Kai, I was in the spirit the other day and I saw three angels. One had six wings. Your other friends say, have you seen the living creatures before? And you, you are there asking yourself, are you born again? Why is it that no spirit being like you? Why don't they reveal themselves to you? The other day you were sitting down, somebody came and asked you that, did you, did you just see them? Then you say, see who? Has it ever happened to you? Where you are with brethren and then they intimidate you so much that you now feel like there's something wrong with it. It's either you are a pretender or God don't like you. When in a meeting the other day, a preacher came up. We have been in the meeting before he came. We were the ones that started with the opening prayer. When he entered, he said, how many people can see the angel standing behind me? So all of us now kept quiet. He now said, let God give us understanding. Follow me. Anything you want to see, you must receive light first before you can see. Because with, you can have eyes, but if you don't have light, you still will not see. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I gave you an illustration of although you have eyes, if we off all the light here, you will not see. So it means it is the combination of walking eyes plus light that gives you sight. Now you can have eyes but no light, you still will not see. How do you see? I'm talking about spiritual sight. Light, light, is not a general occurrence that you apply to everything per se. There is light for specific things. You can have light for prosperity and be deficient of light for divine health. So divine health, as long as kingdom health is concerned, you are bankrupt of light in that matter, but you are a colossus of light in the context of prosperity. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen? So it means anything you want to see, you must look for light in that thing. For instance, let me go back to that example. Everybody is talking about angels. And you are the only one that cannot see anything. <laughs> what do you do? Whisper to somebody by your side, say Ezekiel. Say Ezekiel. There are certain books of the Bible that are specialized in different matters. If what you are looking for is encounters with the divine, Ezekiel is a landlord of angelic encounters. The moment you begin to read the book of Ezekiel, what you are doing, you are harnessing light. The things your eye could not see before because of the peculiar light you have interacted with before you finish that book I guarantee you by God the light you have touched will give you sight in that thing that you have light for this is how to study scripture you don't study haphazardly you just carry scripture and do it like this and open anything and say well this is where God led us you go in subject matters I want to understand prosperity. So you go and check the life of Abraham. What keys? It will. When Ezekiel started talking about these things, he made it look like they were, they were around him 24 hours. As you start reading, when he's describing them, talking about the wheels that follow them when they move, talking about they move in the, in, in the speed of light, when he begins to describe the nitty gritties of their operation, your mind becomes permeated with those reality. Now, you can now see. 
because the facility that makes for sight, you have touched it, is called light. You want to understand wisdom? It's a spirit. It's a spirit. Go and meet Solomon. Fix an appointment with Solomon in Proverbs. If you don't find him in Proverbs, go to Ecclesiastes. You will see him there. Only you and him. Sit down. Read one. Meanwhile, if you are studying the books of wisdom, you can read it more than ten times in a day. It is like an old man advising a wayward child. He starts with my son. <laughs> no matter how old you are, he says, my son. When you, when you are looking for wisdom, hey. meanwhile, these are the dimensions of God that these men were custodians of. The moment you submit yourself to their mentorship, that's what you are doing by studying them. Light as regarding that matter. So, light as regarding the spiritual hierarchy. The moment you start reading about angelic ranks, angelic operations, spiritual creations. The moment you start reading it, and I, re I recommended Ezekiel as a person who can take you there. Your, your mind has equipped, your, your mind rather has been equipped with light, so now your eye can see. In no time, you will keep your head like this in the afternoon that you just want to meditate and you will see a being. The being did not come because uh, you say, can I, can I see your wing, angel? You are, you, are, you are a joker. Nobody has time to satisfy your inquisitiveness. The reason why you, can, you are seeing now is that you have sustained a light that broke you into their frequency. So they were doing their own thing and your eyes saw them. What I'm trying to share, the only way I can, I can conclude this matter is that it is like a transistor radio that has a knob. Eh? If you don't know the particular frequency, you will not listen to what is broadcasted inside that frequency. Meanwhile, inside this hall, there are invincible frequencies of information. You, your eye cannot see it. It is another way to render that scripture. The things which are unseen. There is a particular... See, inside this air now, inside this air, just look at the air. There's house a song inside this air. There's house a song. There's, 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 there's one song they are singing about so here inside this air now. As I'm talking to you. What you need is a transistor radio that can catch that frequency. Then this same thing that looks like nothing is here, you'll be tuning, you'll be tuning. Then you'll now catch something. When you catch it, you will now hear the particular thing that was being discussed there. This is how you fine tune, you fine tune with light. You tune until you catch that reality. Your eye cannot see it until light enters your heart. You tune with knowledge. Lord, what are the realities of the healing communication of your spirit? What are the realities of the healing power, of the healing anointing? run to the book of Acts. See, every book has something it is hiding. When you are in that book, this is why we study, we study, um, of, of course we want to study holistic, but we also study topically, so that you stay on that matter until you have isolated an encounter for yourself. You are just reading about the mighty wonders of God that he wrote through the apostles. As you are reading, Suddenly, encounters that translate into capacities to command deliverance to you begin to experience it. You know, see, see, I'm trying to conclude now. If you are sleeping and you play, for example, before you went to bed, you own Apostle Joshua Selman's message and you just play it in the background. Do you know there's a 90% chance you are going to have a dream fraternizing with Apostle Selman? Do you know why? Eh? Tell me. It's because the spirit of the man is inside his word. The word that we speak, there are spirits and there are life. Our spirits have a touch of our word. Our spirit travels through our word. That thing you are listening to is not sound. It is a contact you are having with the spirit of the man. 
So the moment your flesh is immobilized, your spirit and his spirit continue the discussion. It is no longer a message you are listening to. It is a discussion. It's counseling. Whatever you are looking for is locked up in this book. Whatever you are finding is locked up in this book. You need to find the person who have touched that dimension in God. Then understudy them. As you are on that matter, light will come for you on that matter. Then you can participate. Nasami haske bazansa ke koma urindu huba. Nasami haske bazansa ke koma urindu huba. Nasami haske bazansa ke koma urindu huba. Haske haske o. Haske o, haske o, haske o, haske o, haske o, haske o, haske o. Ayi li li li, ayi li 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 maso. There is nothing that can be hidden from you if you can search. You want to know what happened before you were born? You want to understand covenants that were struck that are limiting the bloodline that are causing? I can guarantee you every single book every single book is a custodian of a dimension of God. Every single book Nasami haske bazansa ke koma gurindu huba eh Nasami haske bazansa ke koma gurindu huba Maybe now you will pray that prayer I led you to pray from the beginning Lord Open my eyes. 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 Face to face. No more veils. No more limitations. I can now see. Jesus face to face no more pain no more no limitations no more I can now see Jesus I can now see Jesus no more pain no more limitations I can now see Jesus face to face listen listen what I have said in everything I've shared with you tonight I've said you can either look through your eye or you can look through the word. The word of God can become your organ of sight. Anything that is not consistent with the opinion of the word, you don't see it like that. The word of God can become the lens by which you interpret things. You can either live by sight or you live by faith. Those who live by faith, they interpret things from the lens of the word. You're going to pray one simple prayer wherever you are. Lord, let your word abound richly in my heart. Let the eyes of my understanding be enlightened. Let the eyes of my understanding be enlightened. Let the eyes of my understanding be enlightened.
price has been paid the blood has made way for me i can now see jesus face to face the price has been paid the blood has made way for me i can now see jesus face to face face to face face to face i can now see jesus face to face God bless you. God bless you. Enjoy your week and prosper. Oh, we me fool. Oh, we me sorry. Oh, we love and be lori a kemi o. Oh, we me fool. Oh, we me sorry. Oh, we love and be lori a kemi. Oh, we me fool. Oh, we me sorry. Oh, we me sorry. Everything else can wait. Give me your. 